great testimony today. Just been awesome. So awesome. You know, one of the things that I'm hearing a lot of uh, this morning is that the enemy is really intimidated by our prayers out loud. I don't know if you've picked that up, but in my spirit, I'm just hearing that. Uh, Desmond's testimony of the man saying, okay, you can pray for me again, but don't pray out loud because that's freaking me out. Okay, whatever it is in that, you know, that man that was being freaked out is from the enemy, okay? Okay, you're being freaked out because the enemy doesn't want to hear that out loud. Because there's a declaration that when we pray, we partner with that declaration that God is going to do something in my life. And we don't, you know, people out on the streets have never heard that language before. So it can be very scary. But the enemy can use that to totally flip-flop God's intentions for their life. And so I'm hearing a lot about that. Uh, another testimony from, oh, and guess what? My grandson, Shepherd Andrew, is in the house. Yes. And so he is wide awake. He is making himself known. He does that through his hair a lot of times. And so we're just so blessed to have him here with us. Even in his, his little bitty spirit, he just brings joy. I kind of find myself just staring at him. So if I, if I get off a little bit, that's the reason why this morning. So anyway, where was where, where I at? Anyway, anyway, so a testimony, real quick testimony. Um, when we were able to go to the Jesus People Tour worship night on Wednesday night, you know, and they had an altar call. And so Pam and I uh, were on the prayer team. And so we got a chance to go and pray. And Pam was able to pray for two couples, I think it was. Uh, and they were just rededicating their lives. And I got a, pr a chance to pray for some young men that were part of the youth group. And um, same thing, they were rededicating their lives. And so I, I just began to pray for them. And as I prayed for them, I just began, God just told me in my spirit that one of them needs to pray for you. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, how many of you pray out loud? And there was young man, one young man, football player, you could tell his bill. He was just a go-getter. He was like, yeah, I'll pray for you. And he prayed for me and just powerful. Just, you know, I'm like, you're going to have to hold me up because the Holy Spirit's hitting me. But there was young, one young man, he says, well, I don't really pray out loud. And so it's just, I'm just hearing this. God is doing something in these people, in these, in these you know, through our prayers that he wants us to say our prayers out loud. There's something behind when we speak it out loud over our family, over our wives, over our children, over our friends, at work. It's something the, the Spirit, the Spirit moves, Holy Spirit moves when He hears that voice, you know, and I can go into a lot of, you know, sound ways and as they go out with our voice and how, how it reverberates over people and how the Holy Spirit uses those waves to touch people's lives. And so, but this young man, he says, well, I've never, you know, I don't really pray out loud. I said, well, do you talk to God? He said, I do. I said, it's no more than a conversation with God. Now you want to hear what God wants to say over my life. And so I want to encourage you, pray vocally, pray out loud. It means so much. If you get intimidated, just know that's a lie from the enemy that wants to stop you. And I love that because I get the butterflies. When I get butterflies, I go after it now. I'm like, okay, I know what you're trying to do, enemy. I'm going after it. So when I get those butterflies, when I feel intimidation or I get a little bit scared, I'm like, no. You know, but now I didn't run from the line. He ran after the line in the, in the, the pit. I mean, any of you heard that story before? Great story. We can be afraid of the line or we can run after it. If God is truly in our hearts, if the spirit of the living God, Jesus Christ, lives in us, we go after what it is that the devil wants us to be afraid of. Okay? And some of you go, well, Neil, I don't know if I'm in that place today. I don't know if I've ever, gonna, you know, if I've ever been in that place. Well, you are a son and you are a daughter of God, and he wants to strengthen you this morning. He wants to speak life into you to where you're, you're not afraid. You're not intimidated anymore. He's been attacking marriage. He's been attacking friendships. He's been, he's been tackling uh, or he's been trying to intimidate relationships and no more. We won't have it. We won't have it. You know, we have a tendency to want to withdraw. Again, a lie from the enemy. We will not withdraw. We will engage. 
we will engage. It says the gates of hell, right? You all with me? Will not what? Will not prevail. Okay? We have been created to be an aggressive force. Jesus is an aggressive force. How is he aggressive? Because when I say aggressive, you mean, oh, Neil, wait a minute now. I thought we're supposed to love. Exactly my point. We're supposed to be aggressive in our love to people. And that's what's happening. There's something that's, you know, these last several months, especially with Sean Foyt when he's been coming into town, there's, he's brought the spirit of, of just, you know, it's not complacency. He is not going to settle. You know, and there's this spirit that's been going on, uh, and I believe it is from God, that uh, we will see something happening in our younger generation that's going to take this to another level. Because it's expected by the older people. I've said this before. You know, people expect the older people to get that way. They've done been through it all, and now they're just going to, you know, they're going to be militant, and they're expected to be that way. But when we see young people worshiping like they did at Sean Foyt, worshiping like they did at uh, Jesus People Tour, worshiping like you do here, then God uses that for revival. But he, he takes it even a step further because we can't, call for, and I'm, I'm going really fast, but I just really feel something going on inside of me this morning. When we talk about revival, we can't revive something that has never been put in place before. Okay? We're thinking, God, would you revive? He will revive people. Okay? But there are people lost out there that has never experienced Jesus Christ. What can we do to revive them? We can't. We have got to present the gospel to them. And the gospel is all about our love for people. It has no condition. It has no conditions. I love this when Desmond was talking about Bradley. How many of you know Bradley? Unfortunately, he's not with us today. He's probably working. He has some crazy hours. But Brad Bradley has this bright green hair. And sometimes, I don't know, it may be a different color sometimes. Okay? Now, we're all in society enough to when we see something like that, we want to back away from somebody who's wanting to try to bring so much attention to themselves right? Because they have this bright green hair and it's like, okay, what are you going through? Is there some identity issues? But let me tell you something. Bradley went out with Desmond and began to pray for people and people were drawn to him. We need to take notice about stuff like that. You know, I don't want to fall into this normal Christian mode and it is because that normal Christian mode is complacency and I do not want to go there. So if God wants to use me in a radical way, if I need to color my hair, if I need to do something that's going to get your attention so that I can present love to you, then that's what we'll do. That's the, how this works. Jesus was the most radical of all people. He was accused of hanging out with people that you're not supposed to be hanging out with. And he did that. Why? Because he was not intimidated by what the enemy was going to do. He was going to bring love that was going to overcome everything in the world. And he was found in places where nobody else would go. And I want to be found where nobody else will go. I want to be found in those places. And I'm working my way toward even doing more. I love what has been happening these last several months with Sean Foyt and Jesus People Tour because it's stirred something in me. It's taken me out of some complacency that I have been guilty of being into. Because it's helped start a fire. It's helped something in me where... I'm not compl I don't want to be complacent. I'm not satisfied with being complacent. In fact, through Jesus Christ, I've understood that complacency starts making me withdraw and backing up instead of moving forward. And it's just, I want to continue with this. Now, uh, we know Madison Street Worship is going to be coming in town uh, in August. And so if you've not heard any music from Madison Street Worship, not that I'm saying that and I want to plug my my son and daughter-in-law, but I want you to start listening to that music. I want you to start getting that music into your spirit. Okay? For one, when they show up, I want us to be able to know every song that they're going to sing. Makes sense, right? When people come in town and their worship team, I want to know every song that they have because I want to be able to sing it. I don't want to be sitting there going, trying to figure out the words. Okay? But also what we do is we begin to partner with who they are and what they're going to bring into our city. Okay? But I say that it's because there's things that are happening. And this is, these are young people. The people that came with Sean Foyt, young people. Jesus People Tour, young people. 
Madison Street Worship coming. Young people. God, what's going to be next? Because it's starting with our young people. And I'm talking to every young person here. I pray over you. I want God to be stirred up in you so much that nothing can hold you back. Ben talked last Sunday a powerful message because why it was raw. That's what we need. Okay? We don't need to sugarcoat anything. And the youth bring it. The young people bring rawness that says, okay, they're going to get right straight to the point. Let's get through this so we can get past it and grow and move forward. Because we got tons of places we can, we can go. There's tons of things that we need to be doing, you know. That message that being had, I want to take that message to places other than here. That's a message that people need to hear in Wings of Life. That's a message that people need to hear all over this city. Because it takes the rawness and it says, okay, we've identified something. God, would you heal it right now in Jesus' name. And so, I'm just, whew, man, you know, and today I want to talk about, and this may go on for a couple of Sundays. I'm not quite sure where the Holy Spirit wants to lead with this. I do know he wants me to talk about this, and this is going to be on the righteousness of God. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 3. I'm so amazed at my son-in-law. I just kind of, not my son-in-law, but I am amazed at my son-in-law. But my grandson, and I just kind of just stare at him because I'm just in awe. And, you know, as I stare at him, it just reminds me, and it just, the awe that I see in him is the awe that we all should have when we gaze upon Jesus Christ. And now I understand just from a father's perspective, because when I look at my daughter when she was born, because she had just as much hair as he does. You want to know, she did. She had just as much hair as he did. But when I looked upon her and I looked up upon my son when they were born, I was just in awe. And it's been so long since they've been like that, that now when I look upon him and I go, God, I'm just so thankful for who you are. And now I understand how you look at your son, Jesus Christ, and who he is. And I just want to gaze upon Jesus Christ and look at him that way every single time. Jesus, you are so amazing in what you've done. And the example that you set for us is one that set us free. And so I look upon him and just I'm just in awe at God's righteousness and God's grace and mercy upon us. I'm just so excited to see him grow. Not that I want him to grow up really quick because I love that age right there. We can't get enough of it, you know. Because it's so funny. I don't have to hold him. I just want to look at him. I will hold him. But I just want to stare at him. I want to see his mannerisms. It's the same thing when I talk about relationship with Jesus Christ. Sometimes we need to get to that point where we're just wanting to spend time with him so we can look at the expressions on his face. Yes, I did say that. Sometimes we need to see Jesus for who he is and begin to experience him in a way not just through what the Bible says about him, but an intimate way. We have the, the, uh, the series, The Chosen, that comes out and it brings the humanity side out in Jesus Christ. And I love that part of it because that's what I'm, I'm in awe about. I'm just enthroned with the presence of Jesus Christ and who he is as a human. And, you know, we talk about... Uh, the aroma of God. How many have heard that term before? The aroma of God. How many of you know babies have an aroma? That's, I mean, it's just, you know, I hate to, it's kind of like having a new car, you know. You just go, I just like the smell of a new car. But a newborn baby has an aroma that just is just, oh my gosh, it's heaven. Isn't it? Yeah. And for all my young people out there, you will experience it. In one form or fashion, you will experience it. But we're just, and I'm, this is who Jesus Christ is. And when we get into his presence and just to go, I just want to watch you. I just want to see you. I just want to look upon you. I want to joke with you and I want to experience the foods that you like. You know, those are the things that we miss if we're, not, if we're not in relationship with who he is. 
you know, it's easy for us to do that with people that are around us. Some people we don't like the smell of and some people we do, you know, and that's okay because, again, that goes beyond our love because Jesus Christ comes, sometimes he smells me and goes, Neil, you don't smell very well. He said, but that's okay. I still love you with everything that's in me. So it comes out of this relationship. I know I'm really jumping a, a lot, but follow me because, again, when we experience the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, we are set free. Set free indeed. So if you have Romans chapter 3, we are going to read um, verse 21. And you don't have to stand um, now that you've got nestled in. Everybody's okay. I'm going to be in a new living translation. Thank you, Des. Romans 3, verse 21, New Living Translations. Okay, we all good? All right, but now God has shown us a way to, to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. Some of yours may say independent of the law, okay? But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. As was promised in the writings of Moses, and the prophets long ago. This is the key verse I want you to get. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is the true this is true for who? Everyone who believes, no matter who we are. I'm gonna continue on, but that's our key our key um, verse, okay? That um, our key verse is three twenty two. Uh, verse 23, for everyone has sinned, not just some, everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, number one, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and in including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Father, we just thank you for your word. Would you just open it up for us? Expand on it. We love you so much. Jesus, thank you because you are the one who lived this out. You are the one who carried our sin. You are the one who set us free. You are king and you are Lord, and we praise you with all that we have. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We invite you into our hearts. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Humanity is surrounded and submerged in law and is trying to learn how to love. Would you deem that statement true? I'll say it again. Humanity is surrounded and submerged in law and is trying to learn how to love. Would you say that's true? God just kind of spoke to my spirit because, you know me, sometimes I have to, and this is to really keep myself healthy, is to withdraw to certain medias that we have. There's a ton of medias out there that uh, can really, not media in itself, but exactly who are we listening to? Who are we watching? You know? And so when I look at this, basically you have humanity that is thrust into your face no matter where you pick up your phone, you watch your TV, whatever you got, you just walk out there. We're faced with the way humanity is to a degree that they have not experienced the true gospel in Jesus Christ. And so we hear people say it all the time, check him out. And he's strong, too, just real strong. I'm sorry, I can't help it, guys. He's just, he's awesome. But humanity in itself, it's kind of like 
okay, either we can be diligent to follow law or we can be really diligent to go against law. Have you seen that? Some of us, oh yeah, we'll, we'll obey the law. I'm a, I'll obey the law. Pull up at a red light. It's, it's 3.30 in the morning and it's a red light and nobody's around. What am I supposed to do? Uh, Death says drive through it. Reason I stop at it is because probably Des is coming from the other direction. <laughs> but see, this is humanity. We, we are getting to that point to where are we going to obey law for what the law says and do it because it is law, or are we going to rebel against law? This is what I find in humanity so many times. When I want to hear from someone that says, you know, I follow law because it gives me life. I follow law because I want to exceed what the law says. So scripture tells us that, but God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. Humanity would say, okay, well, it says we don't have to keep the requirements of the law. So if I don't have to keep the requirements of the law, I can run every red light that I come up against because I don't have to keep the requirements of the law. But Jesus goes further and further beyond anything that the law could actually accomplish. That was by design. Am I saying that the law has fallen short? No, the law is there to expose sin. That's what the law does. It exposes sin. It brings to light the fact that, okay, I've been walking in areas and I've been walking and doing stuff that I should not have been doing. And humanity, from when the garden took place, we have always been doing things just because the law says that we're supposed to be doing them. Or rebel against it because I don't feel it's true freedom when I have someone telling me what I can and I cannot do. Jesus came and he says what? It is for freedom that I will set you what? free. That's a huge statement because I know some people you can't give freedom to because they don't know how to steward it. Some of us don't know how to steward true freedom. Parents can attest to this because we give our kids certain freedoms and yet they abuse the freedoms. And it's like, okay. Now this is Discipline, this discipleship, let me make sure I make sure that you got that. This is discipleship 101 because out of it becomes discipline. Okay. So as Sid and Sam begin, okay, to raise baby Shep, right now he's in a great stage, you know, eat, sleep, and poop. I wish I was in that stage. <laughs> Amen. I love it. But there's going to be a point where they are going to have to give him instructions. They are going to begin to lay some laws down. And, of course, he's a, he's a young boy. We boys just like to get into trouble. We just are going to, well, some girls do too, but, you know. But he will begin to do things where mom and dad will have to do what? They will have to start with law, right? We have to start with laws. Because right now, in their mind, they don't quite understand love yet. Okay? It's not that they don't love and they don't receive love, but they don't truly understand love yet. But what they will do is understand law. What Jesus wants us to get to, okay, and this is going to be some things that I'm going to talk about next Sunday. Jesus wants to get to, to the part where we have a perspective in love that far exceeds what we can do in the law. Okay? Okay? Because he addresses everything in love inside your heart that takes you beyond having to worry about law ever, ever again. I always would teach this message at youth about a cliff. There would be a cliff right here. And humanity always plays right here at the edge of this cliff. This is where humanity is. They are right on the verge of falling off this cliff. Some do and some don't, right? But when Jesus came, he took you so far from being at the edge of that cliff 
to where now your perspective in love takes you to where you don't have to worry about that ever, ever again. Does that make sense? This is what we want for our kids. I don't want you right there on the edge where you're going to fall off. I want you be, to be so enamored by who Jesus Christ is in your life and the things that he can do through you that will bring you identity, that will propel you into the kingdom to where people will see you for who God says you are. That's what I want for your life because that's where true growth becomes from, comes from. That's where true strength comes from. When you can have a young man that's surrounded by friends that are making wrong decisions, okay, but you have a man who is so enamored by who God is in his life that yet he can go in the midst of his friends, not withdraw from them, but yet lead them in a way that says, you know what, I'm with you guys, but I can't make those same decisions that you were making. But I still love you, and I'm still right here. See, that's what keeps you far beyond falling off that, cl that cliff. Now, can God heal if you fall off the cliff? Absolutely. Because I know there are some people in this room that have fallen off that cliff before. And I can tell you right now, I'm one of those people who've fallen off that cliff. That's why I'm so thankful for the righteousness of who God is in Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful. Okay? So I want to back up. I want you to see something. I'm going to back up to Romans 3, verse 9. Well then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? No, not at all, for we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin, as the scriptures say. Now, I want us to understand, he, he says Jews and Gentiles, okay? Do you understand who the Gentiles are? Okay? Basically, the Gentiles are the rest of the humanity, Okay, you have Jews and then you have the Gentiles, the rest of humanity, and where, where they're at. Okay? All the scriptures say this no one, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All, not just some, all have turned away, all have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. Their talk is foul, like the stench from the open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. Now, this is Old Testament writing right here. This comes from Psalm 14, also from uh, Psalm 53. This is what the prophets were saying long ago. Okay? So now, when we understand where all this is happening, we can see now God's grace in Jesus Christ and who, how Jesus wants to address our hearts. Okay? My goal for each and every one of you is not that you're not going to sin because it says, who has sinned? Can you sin tomorrow? Absolutely. We can all sin. But what this has done, now it has equipped us to address a heart issue before it makes itself external. Right? That's what Jesus wants you to do. Okay, it's not that you're not going to sin. It's that when that sin enters your heart, I want you to address it right here. I want you to address it right here before you go out on social media and say something stupid. Amen? Amen. It's going to do the same thing to where you're going to go out and you're going to be so angry at a coworker, you're going to say something stupid to them, and guess what's going to happen? That is sin, guys. 
God does not want us to react out of anger. He wants you to address something in your heart that you can identify through him that says, okay, wait a minute, this ain't right. I'm going to make a decision because now the Holy Spirit and wisdom of the Holy Spirit in me allows me to be strong enough to make the right decisions. What is that decision? I need to learn how to love. Oh, but I don't want to because I'm really, I want to lay some law down. Whew, come on. I'm guilty of this, you guys. I'm, that's the reason why I struggle every day. Every day. I struggle. And you'll have some people in the church, well, Neil, you're not supposed to be struggling. you got Jesus Christ in you. What? If I've got Jesus Christ in me, I believe I'm going to have just as much struggles as anybody else. I just have the, the tools and the equipment to address them before they do something stupid, before the actual enemy shows up in me. Okay? And so... This is what in Romans, they're really trying to get us to see your perspective needs to be flipped from law to love. Law to love. Humanity is surrounded and submerged in lies and trying to learn how to love. If we are surrounded and submerged in love, we will automatically fulfill the requirements of the law. If we are submerged and surrounded in love, we will automatically fulfill the requirements of the law. See, the law in itself, get this, the law in itself teaches us that righteousness is a way until salvation. The law in itself teaches us that righteousness is a way until salvation. How does it do that? One thing the law does, and I just said this, is that it's going to expose sin in your life. And when it's exposed, you deal with it in, it heart, in your heart, then now you have the tools to move into righteousness and in who Jesus Christ is. We can't do it short of Jesus Christ. How many believe that? There's no way we can't do it short of Jesus Christ. This was God's plan, his plan from when he revealed the law of Moses to us, okay, and then through Jesus Christ, okay. Now, I want to address one thing, okay. This has to do everything with what Romans says is that it's our faith in Jesus Christ that leads us into God's righteousness. Our faith in Jesus Christ, okay. So how do we see this? Okay, we see everything that happened from Adam and Eve, okay, to the law of Moses. Then came who? Abram. And then what did Abram do? Before his name was Abraham. What was it that set him, okay, into who he was? And every generation would come through that. Gary, you said it. He believed in God. It was his faith that made him what? Righteous. So how did we miss that? How come we've come so far to this day and we've missed that? What do we do as a human? And I, this is something I just said. What, do we do? what does humanity do? They think that we can create more laws. And if we can follow more laws, then the better off we will be. And I haven't seen that work yet. Haven't seen that work yet. But when we can love somebody, and then we can share testimony of what God has done in my life, I can hang out with somebody and say, hey, bro, you can continue doing all that. This is what's happened to me, man. I followed in your same path, and this is what happened. I fell off this cliff that I've been flirting around with. And it's been through Jesus Christ now that I've been redeemed and set free. And so when you find, that, when you find yourself in that place, I just want you to know that the love of Jesus Christ is there for you.
see, they can, they can disciple Shepherd. But there will be a point to where they cannot tell him what he can and can't do anymore. All they can do is say, look, I have submerged you in love. I have surrounded you in love. I pray that you have all the tools that you need so when the enemy come crouching at your door, you know how to face him and you know how to make the right decisions. That's all we can do. And it's a tough place for parents. It's a tough place for friends who have loved friends and they're making bad decisions. It's a tough place. But what makes us righteous with God is our faith in Him. That's the only thing that sets you apart is your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.